Okay, so now that we've executed our journey, the next thing you want to be really focusing on is the reporting. And this is going to be one of the main things that you're going to be focusing on with your testing. Now, just before we dive into the execution reporting, I just wanted to show you a little bit um, of the insights we can give you onto your journey. So I'm going to click into my journey here. And this is the journey that we've seen before that we've worked on. And this little green light bulb is our journey quality insights. And this is where we can take a look at your journey using our bots, to get them to have a look at your journey and to give you some insight into things you can do to help with the reliability and efficiency of your test. So you can see here, there's a few things that we're checking in our journey quality insights, the journey length, the steps per checkpoint, the use of explicit weights and the use of assertions. And you can see, I've been a very good boy. Everything is green. I've designed this in a sensible way. Now, if I was to change the design of this, and if I added in, say, a wait 20 seconds step, an explicit wait. You'll now notice that my insights, and it's now giving me a warning and it's telling me what I've done wrong there. And it also gives me some suggestions of what I can do. So it's always worth when you've got a journey, um, it's always worth checking those insights and see if there's anything that you should be doing to make that journey better, more efficient, more likely to be reliable and robust. Okay, so I'm going to remove that step and we'll see our insights will change again when we remove that step. So we delete that step and then you can see our insights. We're all good again. So what we want to do is find our detailed reporting and all of that sits in our project activity. So if we look at our project dashboard, we've got a little overview summary of our journeys and our goals. So here's our e-commerce front end goal. And you can see we've had three executions, two have been successful, one have failed. And it tells me about my journeys as well, because I've changed it to coming up as not executed. And we can see everything there. But the main activity for us is going to be in the project activity section over here. If we go into project activity, we can now see all of the executions. And we can see those little summaries of those. We can filter those as well. So we've got job outcome and other things here. I could filter that just to show me the failed outcomes, or I could show just the successful outcomes, or I can have it back to showing all of them. So I can filter by various different things there. And if we select one of these executions, we can see a little bit of information. We can drill into the details a little bit of what happened in this execution. So first off, we can see the date and time that this was executed. And then we can see that it was run by myself over here. And we can see that it was run on the Virtuoso Chrome browser. OK, so we can see a little bit of information and we can see that this one failed. OK, so if we go into it, let's see a little bit more about what's going on. So we've gone in. Now we can see each of the individual steps. And if we were to select a step, we get a before element into a screenshot and an after interaction screenshot. So we can have screenshots before and after whatever interaction we're looking to do. And in these steps, we can see loads of extra information as well. So we can see the sort of time duration that we're running as we go through. And if we click on our failed step here, so we can identify our failed step by the red icon next to it. So you can see that there. And in here, there's lots of information going on. Um, if we go into the events, we can see all the network work requests. Uh, and these are filterable. We can see a lot of filters over here. We can see what network requests were happening. We can see the console logs of what was happening. We can see lots of information, but because this steps failed, we can also go into the root cause analysis and try and find out what's gone on and have a little bit of information in here. So we start off on the summary page. We can see a little uh, analysis of the um, summary executions over time. So we can see what's happened over time and different dates and when they've passed and failed. We've got a visual analysis. Now, <clears throat> because this test step has never passed, we don't have a previous pass screenshot. But if this was a test step that had passed previously and failed on this execution, we would have the two screenshots. So we could analyze what the difference was and what was happening. But if we go back up to the top, we've also got a lot more information than just that summary. We can go into the page source. We can see the page source, so the DOM um, at the time of the execution. So we can see exactly what was happening, what we were dealing with. We can go into that page network information and the console logs, and we've got all of that specific to this execution. 
So there's a lot of information we can use to dig into to find out what's going on. Now at this stage, we might be considering bringing the engineers in. So what we could do is we could click the little goal view here so we can see this journey on goal view and this icon in the top right hand corner. We can go in there and we can click to go to the latest version. So we're editing the latest version rather than necessarily exactly what we execute. Let's go to the latest version. And now we can see our test steps. We're back in our uh, test writing environment. And what we might want to do, we know that this failed on this click on bug step because we put that in as something that's not going to happen, isn't it? We've put that in there. We know that's going to fail. What we could do is add a pause point here. So I could add a pause at that point. So we've got our pause at this step. And now if I was to um, go into our live preview and run that execution, in our advanced mode, we would have our dev tools and we'd be able to see the console and the network logs and what's happening at the failure at that pause point. So we've got a lot of information available. You've got those full insights into the best practice of your test design. You've got the insight into screenshots, network events, console logs, but then also you've got the ability to read through and replay um, the execution, including putting in those pause points to be able to inspect and debug further. So to be able to dive in to what's going